wind up pointing once again to this paradox that um, is arguably at the center of Hobbes's um, account of the state of nature and the need to the rationality of leaving the state of nature and entering into commonwealth. And the, the paradox is that assuming we want to satisfy our desires to the greatest extent that we can, because that's what we take to be good, if we all choose how to act on the basis of our judgment about what will satisfy our desires most effectively, we're not going to be able to satisfy our desires very effectively. And on the other hand, everybody will better satisfy their own desires, achieve what they take to be good, if they give up the right to act on the basis of their own judgment about their own desires. Uh, and so it's in each individual's rational self-interest to transfer their right of nature to the person who becomes sovereign and no longer judge what's good on the basis of their own desires. And in doing that, everybody will better satisfy their desires. Okay, um, so this is the paradox that um, I've referred to a few times. You might still be skeptical about whether what well, this is possible or if it is possible, how frequently this kind of situation may occur. I guess, let me just mention little toy example that I talked about before when you and I were farmers in the state of nature and each one of us thought that we could do better by cooperating with one another and so we tried to make a covenant where I would help you harvest your field when your crops are ready and you will help me harvest mine uh, and you remember that when the time came since we're in the state of nature, for me to help you, there was no assurance if I helped you that you would help me. So I have a reasonable suspicion about whether you would comply in the future. And therefore, I'm not obligated now. So you remember that effort to do better for each of us uh, was unstable or inaccessible because each of us was going to be relying on our own judgment. Okay, so that was a kind of example um, maybe illustrating this. But here's another example. And some of you may have heard this uh, before, so um, let me just tell it uh, in one version of it. So the story is this, you're a bank robber um, and you have a partner for your next job. Uh, and this is a partnership of convenience only. You don't have any affection for this partner of yours. You don't have any other relationship with this partner, except um, to do this job. And you pull off the heist. Uh, but the two of you get caught leaving the scene of the crime. So I'm the district attorney. And what I'm trying to do is get the two of you convicted to as lengthy a prison term as possible. And you want what? As short a prison term as possible. Now I have a witness who saw you and your partner leaving the scene of the crime. And so I'm confident that I will be able to get a conviction against you and a conviction against your partner that carries a five year term, leaving the scene of a serious Unfortunately, that is unfortunately from my point of view, I don't have a witness who saw you actually robbing the bank. If I could get a conviction for that, it wouldn't just be five years, it would be 20 years. And so that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to try to find a way of convicting you, not just for leaving the scene, but for actually robbing the bank. And so here's what I do. I put you and your partner in separate cells, if you're separated, and I say to you, you, whatever sentence you eventually receive, whatever the conviction is for, 
I will reduce it by two years if you testify against your partner. Furthermore, I'm not going to use your testimony against your partner, against you. So you can identify your partner, you can rat out your partner, and get two years taken off your sentence without having to testify against yourself, without that testimony affecting your conviction. And of course, after I'm done offering you this deal, I go and offer the same deal to your partner over in his cell. Okay, so the question is now, what should you do? Remember I said your goal is to have as low a sentence as possible. And you start thinking about this offer and the situation you're in, and you realize you don't really know what the outcome is going to be. You can make your choice, but you don't really know what the outcome is going to be because you don't know what your partner is going to do. And so maybe you think what it's rational for you to do, whether you should take the agreement, the deal that I'm offering or not, maybe you think that depends on what you think your partner is going to do. So your partner is either going to identify you, that you out, or remain silent. So let's think about the two options. If your partner rats you out, I, the district attorney, am going to be able to get a conviction for you for 20 years. And if you take this deal that I'm offering you, I'll knock it down to 18. And so I will reduce that sentence to, uh, by two years. And that seems to be in your interest. If your partner's ratting you out, the rational thing for you to do would be to take the deal and rat him out. But if your partner's, that's not the only possibility. Maybe your partner's not going to rat you out. Maybe your partner's going to remain silent. In which case, I'm going to be able to get you for uh, five years for leaving the scene of the crime. But I've offered you a reduction from five to three if you rat your partner out. So if you think your partner's going to, if you think your partner's going to be a sucker and remain silent, the rational thing for you to do is what? Rat out your partner. Go from five to three years. Okay, but wait a second. Uh, I just said that your partner's going to do one of two things. If your partner rats you out, the rational thing is for you to rat them out. If your partner is not going to confess, and then the rational thing for you to do is rat him out. So whichever choice you think your partner is going to make, it's rational for you to betray him. So let's take a look here. Uh, sorry. And so the question is, what do you do? And the name for this dilemma is the prisoner's dilemma. So here's a picture that um, lays out the different choices. So the way to look at this is that you are choosing this row or this row. You are choosing one of the two rows. Your partner over in this cell is choosing one of these two columns. And so we have four possible outcomes. Uh, you remain silent and your partner remains silent. This is the outcome here. And so on. And you see in each of these cells, you have two numbers. The two numbers are the two lengths of terms for first on the left, you, and then on the right, your partner. Okay. So if you both remain silent, you remain silent by choosing this row. Your partner remains silent by choosing this column. I get you both for leaving the scene of the crime. I didn't make a deal with either one of you. you both Silent, five years for you, five years for your partner. On the other hand, if your partner remains silent and you confess, well, I get you for the five years for leaving the scene of the crime, but I made a deal with you to reduce it from five to three. So there's your three there. Your poor partner, on the other hand, has been ratted out by you, did not make a deal with me, so I get him for twenty. Go through the other two options. 
to see what the outcomes are there. So this is, this is uh, you remain silent. I make a deal with your partner, former partner, I guess, at this point. Right? So you get the full 20, he gets the three. And if you both rat each other out, I get each of you to implicate the other. 20 years each, but I made a deal with each of you, 18. And you can see now that if you were looking, so, so the argument I just made a moment ago was that your partner's going to be either in this column or this column. There's no other option. And if your partner is in this column, you have a choice between five and three. It's rational to pick the three. And if your partner's in this column, you have a choice between 20 and 18. It's rational to pick the 18. So no matter which column your partner chooses, the rational thing for you to do is to confess. And of course, if you look, you can see it's symmetric. Your partner is choosing between this 5 and that 3, this 20 and that 18. It's rational for your partner to confess. It's rational for each of you to confess no matter what the other one is doing. And you wind up down here implicating each other just what I, the district attorney, want. <clears throat> now, yes? I don't know if there's more, because there's a lot more uh, consequences to the like, sacrifice and criminal integrity than the present time. Well, so I want to <coughs> specify that this is the only thing that you're concerned about is your prison time. And in particular, well, so I'll, I'll, I'll hold off on one more point about this just for a second. Yeah. Um, do these options account for the fact that um, if your partner uh, is silent but you confess, your partner will find out that you confess? Right, so in so that 20 be years, he's going to come after you. <laughs> yeah, so forget about that, right? So let's leave that aside. So we're assuming that. Um, the attorney wouldn't accept the change of heart from the uh, partner? No, I wouldn't. So look, I mean, right. So I'm giving you this chance. I'm giving him this chance. I'm not going to go back to him after he sees what you've done. And uh, there's a kind of similar point here. Uh, the implications of your choice that matter to you are here. Okay, uh, so the rational thing for you to do is to confess. The rational thing for your partner to do is to confess. I get you each for 18 years, and what? I mean, what's the, what's the paradox here? What's the um, interesting observation about each of you getting 18? It's a lot more than five and five. So notice that for you, 18 is a lot worse than your five here. But notice also, this 18 is a lot worse for your partner than his five there. So each of you, each of you could have done better in terms of your own self-interest, not just you, by getting this three. But you and your partner both could have done better in terms of your own self-interest if you had just been able to keep your mouth shut. So if you had somehow been able not to act on the basis of your own judgment about your own self-interest, you could have done better in terms of your own self-interest and your partner could have done better in terms of his own self-interest also. Each of you could have done better if you hadn't been tempted to act on the basis of your own self-interest. 